Welcome students. Today we're going to look at compositions of functions. This is going to be a way for us to take functions that we already have and combine them in a particular way to create new functions. In fact, a few of the topics that we're going to cover over the next couple of weeks, compositions of functions, transformations of functions, and inverse functions are all about creating new functions from old functions. So let's start and let's look at an example. We'll suppose that f of x equals the square root of x and g of x equals x squared plus 1. Now we can define a new function h of x by saying that h of x is f of g of x. What this means is that first we figure out what g of x is, and then we evaluate f with g of x as the input. So here I'm going to write f of, and we know that g of x is x squared plus 1, so I am going to take g of x and replace it with x squared plus 1. And so that's going to be f of x squared plus 1. Now we need to evaluate the function f for the input x squared plus 1. So what we're going to do here is wherever we have an x in f of x, instead we're going to replace it with x squared plus 1. So that's going to be the square root of x squared plus 1. Another way of thinking about this part is that we know f as a function is the function that takes the square root. So if we're applying f to x squared plus 1, we're taking the square root of x squared plus 1. When we do something like this, we call this a composition of functions. A composition of functions. I want to give a visual representation of what's going on, kind of a diagram. What's happening here is we're starting with x, and first we are sending it through the function machine that is g. We're applying g to our input x. And what that does is it gives us the output g of x. And then we apply the function f, and that gives us f evaluated at g of x. In this example specifically, we start off with x, and when we put it through g, g of x gives us x squared plus 1. And then we apply f to x squared plus 1. And we know f is the square root function, so that gives us the square root of x squared plus 1. Now, we do have to be a little bit careful here. When we are looking at each of these functions, we need to make sure that the inputs are in the domains of the functions. What that means is when we look at x, x has to be part of the domain of g. Because if x isn't in the domain of g, then we get something that's undefined and we can't move on to apply f. So the first restriction is that x must be in the domain of g. And then once we've done that, we end up with our g of x, which in this case was x squared plus 1. And we do have to be careful here because this has to be in the domain of f. Because if whatever this value is isn't in the domain of f, we end up getting something that's undefined, and again it breaks down. So the other restriction is that g of x must be in the domain 
of the outer function f. Every time we look at a composition of functions, it's going to be important for us to look at the domains to make sure that everything works out. The last thing I want to do here is I want to look at the domains for this particular composition of functions that we're dealing with. What I'm going to do is I'm going to write this again over here. x via g gets turned into x squared plus 1, and then that goes into f and becomes the square root of x squared plus 1. So what I want to do first is I want to look at the domain of g. The domain of g is all real numbers because g of x is equal to x squared plus 1. That's a polynomial. We don't have to worry about a 0 in the denominator. We don't have to worry about a negative number under the radical. g of x is defined for all real numbers, so we have no real problems inputting x. We can input any number x into g. Now next, I want to look at the function f, and I want to talk about its domain. f of x is the square root of x, and we know that the domain of that is going to be numbers x such that x is greater than or equal to 0. We cannot take a square root of a negative, so the thing that we're inputting into x needs to end up being greater than or equal to 0. What are we inputting here, though? We're inputting x squared plus 1. So that needs to be greater than or equal to 0. This is the thing that we have to worry about. This first function, the domain's all real numbers, we're good. But here, we've got to make sure that the input, x squared plus 1, is greater than or equal to 0. Now, if we subtract 1 from both sides here, that gives us x squared is greater than or equal to negative 1. And we know that this is always going to be true. Because when you take a number and square it, the result is either positive or zero. And all positive numbers, as well as zero, are greater than negative one. This is always true, no matter what x is. So because we don't have any problems on our first domain or our second, the domain of our composition of functions is going to be all real numbers. So for h of x, our function is the square root of x squared plus 1, and the domain, I will write this in set builder notation because it's our final answer, it's the set of numbers x such that x is a real number. We are going to look at several examples, if you click on the link below to the, the page of worked out examples, and we're going to see lots of different things happening with the domains. So it's important that you're watching all of these videos so you can see what goes wrong, what we have to be careful for, and there are some things that might surprise you with the domain. So definitely make sure you look at those this will also be something that is recurring as we move forward to look at functions. We always have to be very careful when we're dealing with domains because if we input something that's not in the domain, we get something that's undefined and we don't want to deal with that. So always be careful with your domains.